So, hi everyone. Today I won't be presenting a technical report, but rather a review report. Why am I doing this? Well, I often come across developers who believe that working with their on-premise edition is the only good option. That's why I've prepared this review report to provide you with the bigger picture that is often overlooked. It will help you to understand the role of developers in BTX24. My goal is to present a comprehensive view so that you can have a clear understanding too. This will make it easier for you to navigate the manuals and determine which direction to take in developing your skills. Now let's talk about BTX24. What are the general development tasks that can be accomplished in BTX24? One of the most common scenarios is handling data transfer to BTX24. This is when a customer approaches you and says, I have an Excel file with all customer contacts. I want to have them transferred to BTX24 because we've decided to use CRM now. Secondly, there may be specific integration requirements with accounting software or an ERP system. This is also an area where you can specialize and provide development solutions. Plus, there are also various customizations required. When clients need more than built-in functionality and specific scenarios tailored to their industry. As platform developers, we don't always possess the required industry expertise, but you as integrators most likely do. You understand the unique needs and requirements of different industries. And finally, there are tasks where you have already accumulated development and product competencies. It's possible that you had these competencies even before working with BTX24. You are aware of your industry. For example, the real estate sector always requires automation. And you understand the specific scenarios and audience needs. It may be a niche market, but you have in-depth knowledge and you recognize the potential for success. In such cases, you can enter that market with a product based on BTX24 as a platform. How to approach development in BTX24? You see, there are two editions of BTX24, cloud and on-premise. As I mentioned before, I often come across the opinion that if you need to develop something, you should go for the on-premise edition. When a client approaches us and says, I need to implement something specific, we tend to immediately suggest the on-premise option. This is mainly because many developers are accustomed to the web development approach where you can take an existing platform code, make some modifications and achieve the desired result. While this approach seems convenient, in my option, it carries certain risks. BTX24 is not simply a content management system designed for customization. Typical CMS consists of a core and a public part and it's often assumed that you will develop the public part yourself to suit specific requirements. Although BDX24 originated from a CMS and may not appear notably different, it is a ready-made product intended for end users. It already consists of a pre-made public part. Let's consider a scenario. Uh, where in the next release we introduce a new feature that was not available before. A client who has a customized on-premise BTX24 edition approaches you and says, we've seen the announcement and we want to have this new feature too, to which you will unfortunately have to say, I'm sorry, but you will need to pay an additional 100,000 because we need to update your BTX24 installation make modifications to the ERIs where we previously embedded custom code and potentially even rewrite everything due to significant changes in BTX24. What if that happens two, three or more times? 
the client might conclude you are not competent enough and decide to switch to another contractor. Therefore, the risks associated with customizing the on-premise edition of BTX24 are significant and must be perfectly understood and explained to the client. Although it's not always an easy task, in my opinion, it's best to avoid these risks. With the Cloud Edition, the situation is quite the opposite. While we provide you with a limited set of tools, with the, your preferable framework, you still have the freedom to develop without the risk of breaking anything. Let's call it the dialectic of development. One of the advantages of working with the REST API is that it functions seamlessly in both cloud and on-premise editions. You can provide the solutions you built using REST API to any of your customers. This significantly expands the potential client base. Considering the number of registered Bitrix24 accounts we have, the on-premise edition will never have as many registrations. The only focusing on the on-premise Bitrix24 development, you are limiting your potential market, at least in terms of quantity. Moreover, finding PHP developers who are also proficient in Bitrix24 PHP framework is not an easy task. However, when it comes to REST API development, you are not constrained by technology, because REST API is simply the execution of HTTP requests. It does not matter which languages or framework you choose to use for these calls. It could be PHP or even Visual Basic. If you are looking to attract young, talented programmers, no problem at all. If they prefer to work with a modern and popular framework like Vue.js or Angular, they are free to do so. The beauty of working this recipe is that as long as they properly utilize the API calls, they have the flexibility to choose the development framework that suits their preferences. Whether it's Vue.js, Angular or any other framework, they can integrate it seamlessly with BTX24 platform through REST API. This allows for a more dynamic and engaging development experience, making it easier to onboard and empower young programmers with their favorite tools and technologies. Another advantage is copyright protection becomes less of concern. Since the application for BTX24 is a web service hosted on your site, a legal copying would require significant effort. At the same time, copying the code you embed in the client's on-premise BTX24 installation is much easier. With the REST API, there is practically no risk of losing backward compatibility. In the user interfaces of on-premise BTX24, we do not guarantee backward compatibility at all. We may make radical changes to improve the performance or enhance scenarios even if they are not visually noticeable. As platform developers, our primary responsibility is to provide end-user functionality. Therefore, if we change the layout tomorrow and your customization becomes incompatible, we cannot be held responsible for that. When we talk about REST API and the ability to integrate your interface with it, we prioritize backward compatibility. Regardless of any international implementation changes we make, your widgets will continue to function properly. So from now on, I will focus exclusively on REST API. As you may have already guessed, I have certain reservations about low-level customization in the on-premise edition. So. Let's delve into the options available for developers than working with the REST API. I intentionally won't specify for the cloud at this point, because it doesn't matter whether it's uh, in the cloud or on the premise edition, the REST API remains consistent across both environments. We have two development options referred to as applications. An application is basically a web service, as I mentioned before. 
It is a piece of code hosted on your server or the customer server that performs specific actions by accessing BDX24 through the REST API. There are two types of applications – mass market apps and local apps. Technically, they are not different. They just differ in their authorization approach. To make REST API calls, you mostly need to utilize the OAuth2 protocol. There are various webinars and resources available on this topic for different platforms, including our video course, which covers these issues in detail. I won't go into all the details uh, right now. The only difference between mass market and local application is that mass market application receive the only client ID and client secret key pair to facilitate token renewal. And you can install the same app on an unlimited number of BTX24 accounts. In the case of a local application, it is developed specifically for a particular BTX24 account. Typically, it involves individual integration and custom functionality tailored to the customs need. For a local application, you receive keys that allow token renewal only for that specific BTX24 account. Local applications generally involve advanced functionality, and you often have a template for such applications. You can sell this template with individual modifications to different clients, creating separate copies of the code for each client. In these copies, you insert a new pair of keys for the respective client's account, make necessary code modifications, and thus you have multiply web services that share similarities, and so on and so on. If you realize that all your clients require essentially the same functionality, it's better to utilize the mass market solution mechanism. Even if you don't eventually publish such an application on the BDX24 marketplace, you can provide your client with individual links to install the application on their accounts. The key advantage is that you won't need separate keys for each client. Additionally, there is a unique feature called webhooks. They are ideal for getting started quickly and addressing practical tasks specific to individual clients. With webhooks, you receive a sort of perpetual API key that does not expire like all the tokens. You simply make REST API calls using this key. Webhooks are fantastic, and our statistics indicate that hundreds of thousands of webhooks are currently in use on BTX24 accounts. This demonstrates the diverse range of integrations that customer need, and webhooks can be used for simple integrations, such as sending or receiving notifications from external system. They provide an easy and an effective way to implement various scenarios and integrations. The reason I'm explaining all this is to help you understand that various technical approaches available when working with the REST API. When a customer presents you with a specific task, it's important to determine the most efficient way to solve it. You need to consider the technical options available, ranging from simple to more complex but broader in capabilities and choose the approach that best suits your particular case. Now let's delve deeper into the possible approaches for working with the REST API. Essentially, working with REST API boils down to two options. Web services hosted on your server and a static HTML JavaScript app that runs in the client's browser when they load the static HTML page in a frame. In the second case, REST API calls are made through our special library. We have a lesson in our video course on this topic, called Static Application. However, it's important to know that when the user closes the page, your application ceases the to function. It doesn't make any further calls, handle REST events or work in the background. Developers often start with Static Application because it appears simple. And to some extent, it is. You create an interface, write handlers for button clicks and other UI elements, and it seems to work like magic without the need to deal with tokens. 
But this approach has limitations. As soon as more complex scenarios come up, or the need for a more sophisticated interface arises, you'll encounter challenges and may need to employ workarounds in your code. Performance issues can arise because controlling the number of REST API calls becomes difficult, and there is no convenient storage for large intermediate data. Making joins on receiving data becomes inconvenient as they are processed like ordinary arrays. Most importantly, static apps cannot receive REST API events, which is an important limitation. Remember REST events? REST API does support events, such as receiving a callback when a deal in BDX24 is changed. These events can be utilized to enhance the functionality and capabilities of your application. It's important to keep in mind that static apps have limitations when it comes to handling events and other advanced features. To address these limitations and overcome growth challenges, it's highly recommended to develop competence in building web services. If you are involved in web development, learning how to create web services will be essential for your work in the future. You need to learn how to handle high load projects, because a web service should be capable of scaling effectively under heavy loads. I've split web services in two approaches on this slide. The first approach involves the web service being in a sleeping state, waiting for a call from BTX24. Examples of this approach include automation rule handlers, REST API event handlers, delivery service handlers, payment system handlers, and more. BTX24 triggers your handler, and if necessary, it can make REST API calls within the handler. After the web service has completed its task, it waits for the next call. While this scenario may seem simple, implementing it to handle hundreds of calls per second can be complex. It often requires designing a robust architecture that includes incoming queues and special software to handle such high loads. The second approach, labeled AIM and HEAT on the slide, involves your web service initiating calls to BTX24. For instance, if there are data changes in an external system that needs to be reflected on BTX24, your web service will make the necessary calls. However, it's important to consider the limits on the number of REST API calls to a single BTX24 account. To regulate this load, you may need to implement an ongoing call queue within your web service. This approach presents technical challenges, but it also provides opportunities for growth and improvement. Overall, Building web services and mastering their implementation will be crucial for extending the functionality and scalability of your integrations with BDX24. Let's see now how you can utilize BDX24 REST API. As you can see, there are numerous integration possibilities. Let's quickly go through them as our goal today is to have a comprehensive overview. Basic automated processes. At the REST API level, you have the ability to incorporate automation rules, theorem triggers, workflow actions, and event handlers. The majority of objects in BTX24, with only a few exceptions, have events for adding, modifying, and deleting data. These events allow you to implement complex logic for interactions between BTX24 objects. You can integrate with messengers, either through open line connectors or you can make chatbots. Uh, by the way, we believe that chatbots can be extremely useful and they don't necessarily have to be complex chatbots, equipped with uh, natural language capabilities, designed for full-fledged sales or first-line support. Such scenarios tend to be highly individualized and it's not practical to develop them for small businesses. These customers usually lack the necessary data for training or the expertise to describe their business logic of such bots. However, 
they still want to get a simple solution designed to address the very specific practical need to automate a routine task. Consider a scenario where an employee has already arranged a sale with the client via a messenger. This process is typically manual and lacks automation. In this case, the employee can add a chatbot to the conversation that performs a small, specific function. For instance, the chatbot can inquire about convenient delivery options, confirm if same-day delivery is possible to a specific address, and so on. These are straightforward tasks that can be accomplished with just a few simple questions, without requiring advanced programming. These chatbots are more effective than place it with the conversation, and that's where the convenience of embedding them in BDX24 proofs is available. Take full advantage of this feature. Next, you have the option to integrate your own message providers. Typically, this includes SMS provider, but it can also be utilized for other channels that utilize a client's phone number for sending messages, such as WhatsApp. We have a separate lesson on this topic in our video course. Let's not forget about telephony. Many customers rely on stand-alone office PBX systems and either cannot or prefer not to switch to a cloud solution. However, they still need to integrate their telephony system with BTX24 when they start using the CRM. This presents a fantastic opportunity for such integration. You don't necessarily need to be a telephony expert, since you won't be managing voice traffic directly. In fact, the majority of the integration only involves saving call details in BDX24 and attaching call records. You can even explore more advanced capabilities, like displaying or hiding call cards in BDX24 during a call routed through the dial plan. For those with the know-how, it's even possible to build a verb RDCs client enabling BDX24 users to make calls directly from their browsers. Additionally, you can work with content by adding custom blocks with your own layouts to BDX24 sites. In our past webinars, I demonstrated how to create a block containing a personalized appointment form that seamlessly adds appointments to the BDX24 calendar. We also provide tools for exporting and importing pre-designed website templates. So, welcome aboard! Payment system, delivery services, cash registers, which are especially important for online sales in some countries, can be seamlessly integrated using the BDX24 REST API. These integrations are embedded through all product scenarios, whether it's online store, CRM or chat, no online sales scenario is complete without these integrations. Let's talk about widgets, which happen to be my personal favorite. With BTX24, not only do we provide the capability to integrate automation functionalities, but we also allow you to incorporate your own user interface. These widgets can be industry-specific or cater to many other purposes. They are already numerous places where widgets can be implemented. One of the most prominent areas is within the CRM. You can create menu options for CRM items and grids that upon clicking open a slider with your application. There are also add-ons available for different scenarios as well as tabs, buttons in the timeline, drop-down menus and more. All of this enables you to offer users additional interfaces within BTX24. The beauty of these integrations is that you don't necessarily need to perform complex data exchanges between systems. For instance, there is no need to duplicate an invoice created and edited in the external accounting system with BTX24. Accounting software is a special tool that is convenient and functional on its own. Instead, you simply need a link between a customer in the CRM and their corresponding invoice in the external system, allowing for seamless navigation between the two. 
You can enhance the user experience by adding activities to the deal. When a user clicks on the activity, BitX24 opens a slider with the application, allowing you to display the corresponding invoice from the accounting system interface within a frame. We have successfully implemented this functionality. The key focus for user is to work with their documents in the context of the client within the CRM. Let's consider a scenario. How can we enable users to add invoices to an external system from BitX24? With the BitX24 REST API, you can easily add an invoice button to a timeline. When it's button clicked, BitX24 opens your application in a slider. At this point, you can synchronize the current client from the CRM with the external system. Then you can either provide the user with a link to edit the invoice in the external system or directly display the invoice editing interface from the external system within the same slider. This transparent and user-friendly scenario eliminates the need for complex mechanism to synchronize data between the entire CRM and the accounting system. This is the magic of the product approach. The CRM detail page also offers interesting embedded opportunities, custom field types. You can embed your own interface for displaying and editing fields in BitX24. This can include indicators, additional buttons with a drop-down list and much more. For instance, there are third-party solutions available that allow users to manage workflows directly from the CRM details page. Similar embedding possibilities exist in all CRM objects and smart processes and tasks. Calendar, our build messenger, workgroups, user profiles, site editor, and much more. We are continuously expanding the capabilities of widgets, but even now you can cover the entire BDX24 system with widgets from all angles. And the best part is that all of this can be achieved without making any modifications to the core functionality of BTX24 itself. There is no risk of breaking anything or experiencing compatibility issues with updates. Now let's move on to the tree of the BTX24 REST API. I would like to present this information in a slightly different way than it is presented in the documentation. Here I haven't divided the methods by modules. Allow me to explain why this approach is important. BTX24 is a comprehensive set of integrated tools by design. This distinction is crucial. Let's take Slack, for example, which has numerous integrations with various tools. While they offer a wide range of integrations, they don't provide complete scenarios involving more than two tools at the same time. Let's say a customer uses a CRM system and manages tasks in Rike. Individually, both the CRM and Rike integrate seamlessly with Slack, sending notifications and chat links. But how do you implement a scenario where a new lead comes in and you need to assign a task to a responsible employee? It becomes challenging because, despite the abundance of integrations, these are separate products and each scenario needs to be implemented individually. In contrast, BitX24 integrates all the necessary tools from the beginning. This means that you can add your own business scenarios leveraging the pre-existing integration capabilities. All you need to do is understand the available tools as developers and determine which ones to work with when implementing the desired scenarios. Let's dive into the available tools and features within BitX24. Firstly, we have informational management tools. You can store data in various locations such as the BTX24 drive, application data storage, lists and smart processes. All these tools provide you with the means to effectively manage and store your data. When it comes to communications, BTX24 offers built-in tools that can address your needs. You don't even have to worry about integrating your own messaging providers or telephony systems. These built-in tools can serve as solutions for your communication requirements. 
For instance, there are third-party solutions that generate business reports based on telephony calls. These solutions don't need to know the specifics of each customer's telephony provider. Whether a customer is using Ring Central today or switches to OneH tomorrow, the business scenario remains unaffected because the integration has already been handled. Your solution can simply work with the data that is available in the system. Thanks to these integrations, the same concept applies to messengers. If you develop a chatbot for BTX24, it can seamlessly interact with all the open line connectors, even those you may not be familiar with. BTX24 also provides capabilities for company management. You have access to comprehensive employee information and can incorporate the company structure into your business scenarios. Lastly, there is a significant aspect related to daily work routines. BTX24 contains a wealth of task-related information. For example, based on an employee's time spent on a task, you can automatically generate a timesheet and associate it with a deal using the BTX24 document generator when their deal reaches a specific stage. To sum it all up, BTX24 offers a robust suite of tools and features that empower you to leverage existing integration, streamline communications, manage company information and optimize daily work processes within your solutions. In these specific scenarios, tailored to individual customers or audience, may not be pre-built within our product. But BTX24 provides the necessary tools that you can utilize to construct and implement these scenarios. The programming required to bring these scenarios to life is often minimal. Plus, there are plenty of sales-related tools available within BTX24, which I have emphasized in this branch, due to their abundance. Those tools range from the comprehensive CRM features to online stores and commercial catalogs. The best part is that all these features are already accessible to you. The key is to envision and design the scenarios you wish to implement. So, where do you want to evolve? There are two possibilities to consider. The first option is to continue providing your customers with the development services on demand. As indicated on the right side of the slide, there is an extensive list of potential topics for these development-related services. This field presents a significant opportunity for revenue generation, as numerous businesses require customizations and integrations. Many companies also utilize products other than BTX24. So they need to connect and integrate these different systems. Lastly, let's, let's explore to the topic that I'm particularly passionate about. Product development and solutions for the mass market. Welcome to BTX24 Market, where you can delve into the development of solutions that cater to a wide audience. Here you will find all necessary directions for successful work in this field. Now, moving on the last slide, which provides a list of the most important tutorials and resources. If you are new to REST API, I highly recommend starting with our new video course. It covers webhooks, apps, and provides ready-to-use examples with widgets. We've made it easy to understand, enabling you to apply the lessons immediately after watching them. Additionally, there is a comprehensive guide on REST API, a dedicated course on the chat platform, and specifically for this presentation, I have created a Telegram chat for developers. It could serve as a platform for sharing experiences and engaging the fellow software engineers. I'd like to add also that within the next month, we plan to cover the following topics for you. BTX24 widgets, automation rule, offline REST API events, etc. So follow our announcements. That concludes our video. I realize it was quite lengthy, but I hope you found it useful and gained some insights from it. Thanks a lot for watching.